Y'all, Tommy Lee just put Tamar Braxton's man JR on blast and slammed him for being a user, claiming that he used her to get under Tamar's skin and humiliate her. Like that's not wild enough, Tommy also showed support for Tamar in her messy public beef with JR. And nobody thought we'd ever see the day that Tommy and Tamar would ever unite. But y'all, it looks like JR did them both dirty. So they had to join forces to take him down. You know what they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Now Tommy did not come to play at all because she also made some concerning allegations about JR, a bully who allegedly put hands on her and Tamar. But how on earth did Tommy even come into this conversation? Or is she just Jason Cloud? Now for those of you who don't know, these two women have had beef for a very long time and they never turned down an opportunity to throw shade at each other. For example, when Krishan Rock acted a fool at Tamar's concert last year, Tommy was quick to throw shade and accuse Tamar of trying to use Krishan for clout, but it backfired. Tamar then read Tommy for filth, accusing her of being a flop. She said, and before someone takes my phone, if you on C and your name starts with a T and you never even sold out a bag of blow pops, stay silent. God bless y'all. Let me and my team heal from this trauma in peace. She continued, so now y'all want me to address out of work reality stars? Never. Me and my Muppet employed self will keep you on the list if I need a nun fighting sea head for a 2500 an episode for one of these shows of mine I'm casting for. We not the same. Go sell some ad for your next hit. I'm finna come with my next hit. But if you're wondering where this all started from and what it has to do with anything, well, this is how it began. Tommy was salty about Tamar's comment even though she was the one who randomly decided to start acting messy. At the same time this was happening, Tamar was having issues with her boo thing then, JR. A few days before JR had dumped her on social media blindsiding her, the next thing we knew he had hooked up with Tommy and it was clear as day that they were still together despite Tamar. And Tamar, God bless her little heart, immediately took this as a sign to fight for her man and take him back from her op. She succeeded, but she looked like a total bird brain. To make the situation more embarrassing though, she bragged about taking her man back and threw some shots at Tommy. That's why I had to go get my man back, y'all. And I know y'all lying. If y'all thought I was gonna let my man go because he took some crackhead to a basketball game. Then her and JR attended a game together. Again, she was clearly trying to send a message to Tommy not to play with her and that she was back with her man. She probably thought this would make Tommy salty, but Tommy ended up humiliating her and revealing that she was indeed getting down with JR and they had a little something something going on. Tommy dropped receipts that proved that JR asked her to go to the game with him before he asked Tamar. And the only reason he asked Tamar was that Tommy said no. In the text, JR said, okay, well, I only have plans that you are welcome to join a field level suite for the Saints versus Falcons game. I'm here till Thursday. It also looked like he was trash talking Tamar cause he also said, I am on a positive energy journey only. I'm allergic to negative or toxic ish. And Tommy replied, love that for you honestly. He then said, had to heal and thankful for all that I learned in that healing. But regarding the game, he said, okay, well, I only have plans that you are welcome to join a field level sweep for the Saints versus Falcons game. Then Tommy said, what day is this? And he said, Sunday after Thanksgiving. So this was the same game that he took Tamar to. So all evidence points to the fact that he only took Tamar as a second option. Like that wasn't messy enough. Tommy also wrote, love and war, not tug of war. Stay strong with those cameras cut. Everybody who knows, jokes on them. Y'all know that Tommy is a little cray cray. So she didn't stop there because she bragged about how she had gotten JR to eat the booty like groceries. What is wrong with the situation is that that is your man, as you call it. That is your man. He knew it was a situation with me and you. And he was down. He was down to play op games. I wouldn't take nothing like that serious, my love. That ate my ass and I sent him on his way. It wasn't. She also revealed that JR had been spilling tea to her about Tamar. 
you don't want me to expose how you were saying that you kicked her out and she went back to her mother's house? Not Mrs. Braxton. Not Mrs. Not Mrs. Mrs. Singer with the sold out tour that JR also told me was flex. It was a cap. It was she flexing. She don't have no sold out. Between me and you was his exact words. The tour not sold out. He said you was messy. He said you went back to your mother's house. He told me a lot of things that he shouldn't tell a stranger. I just met this man less than a week. And being a Braxton and getting involved in these low budget feuds is absolutely crazy. But what's really crazy is that Tamar still went ahead to marry him after all of that. Now, as y'all can expect, the marriage lasted for a little second, only two months before they divorced. Now, I don't know why Tamar chose to keep it private, but she already knew that it was going to have her looking bad. But anyways, she and JR got into a couple of days ago when she accused him of spending her money on his side pieces. She also accused him of cheating, saying, played in my face for a 25 year old. Ugh. Shake my head, took my jewelry, took me to Kirk's, and all along had a whole tramp. I hate you, Jeremy Robinson. Now you already know that Jeremy is just as messy as Tamar, and he came out trying to clear things up, saying whatever he had with Tamar ended over six months ago. According to him, she has been acting delusional because he's told her plenty of times he doesn't want her and isn't trying to be with her. I'll be very clear. I've been single for the last six months. We have been trying to identify what that looks like, closing one chapter and figuring out what it's like to be friends again. I've been very specific about my boundaries. I've been very specific about where we stand as friends. Go date anybody you want. I'm going to date when I'm ready. I am emotionally unavailable to you and I'm physically unavailable to you. Now, birthday comes up, plans are put in place. Of course, I want someone that I consider to be family to be involved in that because if anybody knows her, she is big on birthdays. I don't lead people on. I'm very direct. Listen, if, if anything that you're doing or that you want to do comes with an agenda, I don't want to be involved in it at all. I don't want you to be involved in my birthday plans. I don't want you to come to Turks and Caicos. This is not a reconciliation time. Whatever you decide you're doing is because we're friends and because I'm still being involved in my son's life. I still would love for you to have a relationship with my children, but not to the extent that you make up these stories that aren't real. I went to New Orleans. I booked my room at Four Seasons on booking.com and didn't realize that the card I'm using, which also ends in the same three last numbers, was tied to something that we booked several months ago. No harm, no foul, we're talking $900, stop it. While I'm in New Orleans for a funeral, my really good 25 plus year friend who passed away, I spent time with his family. I extended my stay because I needed time to reset. So I get a call yesterday Hey, did you stay at Four Seasons? Yeah, I did. Uh, in fact, I extended, I gave them my card and everything's good. Why, what's up? Oh, well, I got a call about some chick who used my card at Four Seasons. I said, that's not possible. This is funny, ha ha ha. What, what are you talking about? Well, I thought we can friends, we can talk about it, but this is laughable. I didn't stay with anybody at the Four Seasons. I'm not seeing anybody, Didn't wasn't on a date, none of that. If I was, you're my friend. What do I have to hide about that? Um, I'll just say cooler heads didn't prevail. And next thing you know, I'm on her story and I'm being accused of things which are just blatantly not true. Um, I have never led Tamar Braxton on. I never will, nor will I. This caused Tamar to crash out even more, and she dragged him, blaming herself for marrying him after he ate her ob's groceries. And I married you after you ate somebody whole booty sandwich. Y'all, I'm not trying to make this a big deal. I swear, it's it's not about y'all. It's a thousand dollars. It's not, it's not, you know, make or break. It's the point. The point is, is that you wanted me to sit back and let you not only use my card. Let's just say it's a mix-up. Okay, fine. 
But now it's different because you're using my card for your extracurricular activities. And let me just keep it gangsta. I wouldn't even trip on that. You know what I'm saying? Wah, wah. It's not that serious. Me and your relationship status has changed the way I see you have changed. You know what I'm saying? Just like you outside, baby, I'm outside too. Like, let's stop pretending like you is the last of the Mohicans. You are not. You know what I'm saying? It's just not like, oh, I'm addicted. Well, that's where Tommy entered the chat again. Because according to an insider, Tommy has allegedly reached out to Tamar to make amends. The insider revealed that JR had dumped Tommy like a hot potato after he successfully got under Tamar's skin and got her back. This made Tommy feel used, which is interesting, because everybody knew that the only reason that JR was with her in the first place was that he wanted to hurt Tamar, and when he successfully did it, he had no more use for her. But that's not all, because Tommy is allegedly making some heavy accusations, claiming that JR used to bully her and once put hands on her when she refused to obey him. Now, DV is a very serious situation, and I'm not gonna say it's true, but if it is, then it would explain why it's so hard for Tamar to leave. So if he was violent with Tommy, as she's claiming, then it would explain a lot. But y'all know the fans have been all over this drama, and they believe in comments saying, JR got his behind on that phone and told Tommy that Tamar was trying to get back with him every day since they had broken up. This makes that she fought for me line in that ish he posted so effing disturbing and cringy. Stand the F up Tamar and leave this lane. Tamar married that white man after he ate Tommy's behind and I knew it was no saving her then. The end ain't no way Tamar says she married JR after he ate somebody else's behind. Some things need to be taken to the grave. Y'all, this situation is absolutely crazy, but I gotta know what you think about this mess. Do you think that Tommy and Tamar are ever going to make up? Or do you think that JR and Tamar are actually done? Drop your thoughts in comments below and then check out this next video.